Welcome guys and girls to this video. In this video, we are going to go over the newly released A2A or agent to agent protocol as well as how is it different than MCP or model context protocol. Do you really need one versus the other or can one function without the other? For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Raj. I'm a principal solutions architect working at AWS. As part of this video, I will also share some insights and predictions from my conversations with actual customers from the trenches with real world projects. Let's get started. Uh, so I have a separate video on MCP. So if you want to know MCP in detail, check out that video, but going through it real quick because that is important to understand A to A. Uh, so let's say you have an application running and as part of the application, you have a large language model and some agent and some code, right? So this code is running inside the agent. And you may ask uh, this application, hey, what's the weather in Tokyo and provide hotel prices in Tokyo. And this LLM does not have any knowledge of the current weather or the hotel prices. Uh, so this agent needs to interact with a couple of external tools like weather or hotel price tools. And MCP or model context protocol standardizes it, right? So instead of you orchestrating separate API code uh, to connect with these weather tools directly or hotel tools directly, which is a pain to maintain with MCP, this is a standard MCP code, whereas this weather a tool developers exposes this, exposes this MCP server and then your MCP client connects to this MCP server and this MCP server says, this is what the tool does. This is the schema as in these are the input fields, these are the output fields. So it standardizes the interaction between your agent and this underlying tools, databases, etc. So there is one thing to note. The main prompt to this agent is what is the weather in Tokyo provide hotel prices and the agent is responsible to figure out what are the underlying actions, right? So the agent figures out from your prompt that I need to go get the weather, I need to go get the hotel prices, and MCP kind of implements that. You might tell something to the agent that I need to communicate with a person from HR, and the agent needs to figure out, okay, what does communicate with HR means? That means I need to initiate a connection with the company Slack server. I need to find out who the HR person is and then post a message. So all those implementation will be done by this MCP. Now let's say, instead of you putting the prompt to do something to the app, there could be another agent. A travel company may have an agent which will communicate with another agent. Okay, so in this case, let's say agent A wants to talk to agent B. And at this point, we totally understand that agent B running MCP client, and then to implement the actual actions, they need to talk to some tools such as Slack, Google Drive, Weather App, or even local data sources. Those are being done via MCP. How about this agent to agent? How can one agent communicate with another agent? So what happens today is, so this is before A to A. So what happens today is, they are also done using API, like, previously what agents were talking to tools with, just regular API. And what does that mean? That means custom code. So this is what actual code snippet will look like. So let's say this agent A, it's running some code and it will say, oh, I need to connect to this agent B. The API URL to connect to this agent is this, right? And then I need to get API key. I need to know what I need to pass in the headers what I need to pass in the payload, etc. So what is the problem here? So the problem is when you have multiple agents, so agent A talking to agent B, agent C, agent D, you have to maintain all these different code, different standards, and you need to know beforehand, what does each of these agent do, right? You need to know what does agent C do, what does agent D do, you need to know the actual connection URL for all of these, so everything is kind of, you need to know beforehand and put all that into the code. This is exactly what A2A solves. So like MCP standardize the communication between the LLM agent code and the tools and underlying databases, A2A standardizes the communication 
between one agent and another agent. How does it work? So this is the from the actual official A2A GitHub. So now each agent will have something called agent card. And this agent card will say what does the agent do. And it will also say the endpoint URL to connect to as well as the task. If you want this agent to do something, submit a task like this, and then you can check the status. So how does A to A code looks like? So this is standardized. So agent B has to run an A to A server, right? And agent A will connect to that server and ask for the agent card. So this is what this is, basically. And this is also communicating over JSON. That is the standard uh, structure. So agent B will return to agent A this agent card and this agent card will show what capabilities this agent have. So maybe this agent B can um, notify someone, get, get some other stuff and then book your trip. So agent B will simply say that. And this agent A can parse the output of the agent B and get what are the tasks that this agent B has the connection URL, and then it can submit those tasks. So what does it do? Agent capability discovery, right? So you do not need to know beforehand what are the different agent do. You can simply connect to different agents and then get this agent card and get the capabilities. And it also gives you the connection URLs as part of this A2A protocol. It also gives you how to submit tasks to get something done from this agent B. You can also get push notifications of task status. And Google says this is also a secure protocol. Now again, uh, MCP got released a few weeks back and now some security vulnerability came out. So we will see if this A2A is secure or not, but on paper, Google claims this is secure. And another thing I'll point out is currently this A2A agent card does not give you the payload schema. Um, so MCP, as we know, MCP gives the payload schema, which, which uh, makes your life easier. So you can dynamically discover what field the tools or local data sources are expecting, input, output. A2A does not do that yet. Hopefully down the line it does that. That will make our life even easier. So now if we go back to previous agent-to-agent -agent interaction, Instead of separate custom code for each of these agents, the code could be standard, as well as you can discover new agents much faster. So now this is a protocol, right? So what does that mean? That means the agent B needs to follow it and expose it so that agent A can go discover it. What does that mean? Well, this is traditional client server architecture. So as you could see, these tools are exposing the capabilities and the schema using this MCP server, which is basically end of the day is piece of code running somewhere. Same way, this agent, this in this case, the agent B needs to run an A2A server, which at the end of the day could be a piece of Python code, right? Which says, pose the capabilities of this agent in this path, return this JSON. The agent that's calling this A2A server needs to have a A2A client, right? I showed you a sample piece of code of A2A client in the previous slide. So now the question is, how does this A2A work with MCP? So at this point, hopefully you understood the difference between A2A and MCP, right? So MCP implements the actual underlying tool and local data source connections, whereas A2A is agent to agent communication. So it goes in hand in hand. So how does it look like with everything put together? So we have one agent first connects to another agent using this A2A client. So it queries the A2A server and says, hey, Mr. Agent, what do you do? And how should I submit the tasks to your agent? And A2A server returns all that to agent A. And using that, agent A submits a task to agent B. This could be a simple prompt. Agent B gets that prompt and figures out to complete this task, I need to connect to, let's say Slack and a local database. How do I do that? It does that using MCP client B, connecting to MCP servers, 
running those tools. Similarly, this agent can also connect to another agent and then do the similar workflow. So I'm showing different variations. And in the last case, I thought this will be interesting to show as well, the agent A connects to agent D using this A2A client server architecture. Agent D figures out how to complete the task. But in this case, a single MCB server E is running for the tool A and tool B. So you do not need separate MCP server for each tool, each tool. Remember, at the end of the day, this is all just code and these are all open source. So you can put the logic to connect to different tools and even the local data sources in the same MCP server. One thing I have not yet seen is multiple MCP clients running within the same agent because then they have to communicate using the same port and that could create a conflict. Maybe down the line, that pattern will happen. So the question, A2A adoption. So this is just a standard. So this is not a tool or a package. You do not go to your command line and install some package to adopt this A2A. You literally have to go put that in your code. So currently agents are talking to another agents using API literally on the code that's exposing the API, you have to put expose this agent card, right? All the agents that's out there from different companies needs to adopt it. Now, this is interesting. MCP is from Anthropic and Anthropic is not in the Google A2A partner list. So Google just came out with this last week. So these are all the companies that are adopting A2A. And what does that mean they're adopting A2A? Okay, so let's say this is Intuit. Intuit has an agent to do taxes, okay? All it means is Intuit is putting the code changes so that it runs an A2A server and whenever someone connects to this A2A server, which is Intuit agent, Intuit will return, okay, this is my agent card, these are my capabilities, this is how you submit task. this is how you get status, this is how you do authorization. So all these companies are doing the same thing. However, Anthropic is not here. So this is my prediction. My prediction is Anthropic will come up with its own agent to agent protocol. They are not gonna get behind on this race. So what's my recommendation? So um, if you follow my channel, you know, like I work backwards from your goal. I want you to get a better job, get ahead in the career. I don't believe in just learning for learning sake. So there's a lot of concepts that came out with A2A. So don't memorize A2A concepts yet. Hopefully you understood what is A2A, what is MCP. So MCP, go forward and study. I think MCP is here, here to stay. But A2A, I am not sure yet. So hopefully now you understand what is A2A, what is MCP, what's the difference, how they work together. If you like this video, please click like, ask me any questions. As you see, I work in the real world projects. I'm not a pen and paper instructor. I plan to release a bunch of Gen AI videos and demos. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.